We made it. You know, and as you think about this moment, you know, I just ask you, what aspect of your life is not becoming more digital? You know, every aspect of health, every aspect of social, every aspect of transportation is becoming more digital. And everything digital runs on semiconductors. And our ability to work remotely through the pandemic was because of semiconductors. To stay connected with our families and friends, to have virtual schooling and healthcare through this period of time. Everything, semiconductors, and our national defense is becoming more acutely dependent on semiconductors. And do we want our national defense to have the most advanced semiconductors in the world? You bet we do. And do we want to be dependent on foreign sources for those? You bet we don't. And for our entire history, we at Intel have performed the majority of our R&D and manufacturing right here in the US. We are the only US chip maker that put, you know, does all the R&D, manufacturing leadership, technology development in the United States. And as we came to this period in our strategy, we put our chips on the table. Yeah, I like that joke too. And we did it. We put our chips on the table to help the U.S. regain its manufacturing heart as well as unquestioned technology leadership. And our partnership in Ohio is off to a great start. And under Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor, you know, this, you know, we just feel, come on down, Ohio wants us. And it's just been an incredible relationship and the great support we've seen from the Ohio delegation of political leaders and, you know, Senator Portman and uh, Brown, uh, you know, you know, these have just been extraordinary partners uh, for us. And I show up in D.C. and boy, you know, we just go to work, you know, together. And of course, Representatives Balderson and Beatty, you know, just thank you. Thank you so much for the partnership. You know, and this great state of Ohio has this tradition of manufacturing. You all like to build stuff, and that's exactly what we're going to do together. We are going to build the most advanced stuff in the world right here in Ohio. And we benefit from this long tradition, you know, essential industries, steel, engines, automobiles, chemicals, and more, you know, and because of that manufacturing tradition and the strong technology capabilities of the local universities, this became an obvious choice. And back in January, Ohio Senator Brown, you know, made that statement, you know, the Rust Belt is dead and the Silicon Heartland begins. And I'll say, he was the one to kill the Rust Belt, but Silicon Heartland, that was my phrase. <laughs> but this idea of the Silicon Heartland, right, you know, an epicenter of leading edge technology. And Intel's factory right here will produce the most advanced process technologies in the world. And our customers, our foundry customers, some of them being here today, they need the best stuff for their products. Everything from high performance mobile, artificial intelligence, advanced computing, cloud, all of that will be a result of these factories behind us. Advanced packaging, you know, reliable workforce, including as you've seen today, the most advanced trades on the planet are required to build this facility. And I'll just say we are thrilled for the response that we have seen across that spectrum. And I say every aspect of highly trained technical workers workers, construction, we're going to get to work. And I, you know, we only gave you half a day off of the groundbreaking, so don't screw around, get back to work. But it also is that pipeline of talent in science, engineering, mathematics, innovation, you know, the imaginative, creative skills. And I like to say it's not just STEAM, STEM, it's STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And the need for these skills in America is growing, and we're not keeping pace with that pipeline. And fewer U.S. students are choosing the sector of semiconductors and manufacturing engineering as a career choice. We need to change that. And we need to bring this workforce forward. And that's why you heard this morning from Christy Pambianchi where you know, we are committing our 50 million, the first 17.7 .7 million committed in these first eight partnerships with 80 participants. You know, this is the first step. 
but it's just the first step, you know, because we are moving forward to build the next generation workforce and to harvest. And I want, you know, as I, I, I say, I want every mother and grandmother in the state of Ohio to say, you don't need to go to the coast, come home and work right here. And, you know, it's not, you know, and it's not low-end workers, it's not medium, it's not the highest PhD, it's not construction workers, you know, it's not the next generation, you know, of math, and uh, we had, you know, Finn up here, the next CEO of Intel, it is all of them across the entire spectrum is what we need. And as someone who began my career, you know, my uh, family uh, is here, you know, my mom and dad went to school in a one room, first through eighth grade schoolhouse where my mom still lives today. She said, go to school. So I began in uh, as a, I skipped my senior year of high school, got my associate's degree, and was hired as a young technician at Intel. I know what it feels like to go from the bottom upward. And that's the heart of Ohio. This idea of the community colleges, the most advanced universities, giving opportunity across that spectrum. And that's part of why I am so excited. And I was one state off, you know, I was in Pennsylvania, sorry, you know, right? and I always like to say that when, when you get to nowhere in Pennsylvania, we were just five more miles. Technology plays a critical role in building a digital future, a future that is equitable, prosperous, accessible, and inclusive for all. You know, and this is why we are so excited about the things that we are going to do together here in Ohio. You know, and when I first walked through the doors of the company, you know, the company that puts silicon into Silicon Valley, you know, why has so much innovation happened in Silicon Valley? Right, you know, it's Silicon Valley. And this is the company, Gordon Moore, Andy Grove, you know, Bob Noyce, the companies, the Trinity that started Silicon Valley. And today, we're the company that's gonna put the silicon into the heartland, the Silicon Heartland. But today, this is also a testament to the power of public and private coming together. And we have been aggressive in lobbying, working with the administration, working with the congressional leaders in the House and in the Senate, at the state level as well. Why? Because it is that important for the nation. And I'll tell you, the passage of the CHIPS Act, the most seminal piece of industrial policy legislation from World War II, we all together deserve to celebrate this moment. And I just say thank you all for all who helped make this most critical legislation happen. And I just say, you know, regardless of political affiliation, you know, this is a proud moment where we reached across the aisle and we got something really important done. But I'll just say, we would not be here, right, without our political leaders. We would not be here without the president and his leadership, Secretary Raimondo, Secretary of Commerce, all of these working to bring this across the finish line. And of course, it was a bipartisan bill. How often do you hear that today? Senators Schumer and Cornyn, Senator uh, Representatives Matsui and McCall as the sponsors for the act. And we were thrilled that we, Intel, had a part to play in making that legislation happen. We are honored to be part of that role. In addition to the Ohio delegation, you know, Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas, Senator Maria Cantwell, others were just crucial in coming by, you know, to make this legislation, you know, happen. And, you know, we have Representative Ro Khanna, you know, Silicon Valley, that's Ro. He's Intel's congressman who's here today as well. And Ro, you know, thank you for joining us. And it isn't just that Ro decided to come and join your party, he deeply believes that the power of technology needs to be across the nation and not just in Silicon Valley. And I thank you for that, Ro. And with that, it is my honor, an honor that a farm kid from Pennsylvania should never even dream of, the honor to say the following words, it is my pleasure to introduce the President of the United States. Please join me in welcoming President Biden.